gotten started. Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Is that uh, is that a breakdown that you're having, or is that just routine maintenance? You can be able to afford the cost of those repairs. You know, your business is counting on you to be able to do that. You, you know that. Well, I'll tell you what, we're here to help. We're going to talk about it. So buckle in. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Transport Intel. It is Tuesday nights live, and listen, I apologize if if the video doesn't match the audio. I don't know if there's like a little audio sync hiccup going on. I don't know. I can't tell. Let me know if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay, and if the lips don't match the words, you know, just you know, look at the wall or you know, do something else productive and just listen to the show. I don't know, and then it'll clear up. See, the interviews won't have that same problem. I know skeletons in the closet all right put that aside listen you guys listen welcome to the show i really appreciate you tuning in uh more and more people watching the show it really is neat um you know that uh here's what happens if this is your first time here i give the welcome speech i want you to feel welcome i want you to join the live chat i want you to feel like you can participate here this is like a safe zone okay seriously if you know nothing or if you know everything and everything in between, we are okay. This is the place, all right? And then we're going to go into hello live chat. And here in a couple minutes, I'm going to say hello. I'm going to go through the live chat. We're going to do that for a while. And then we're going to go into industry news. Now, that is where I share memes and funny stuff and sad stuff and happy stuff and more sad stuff because this is car hauling right and then we're going to go into the information superhighway now i'm going to mix that up a little bit since this is the maintenance repairs cost breakdown show i'm going to try to have an interview instead of me lining up all the things that can go wrong i'm going to talk to my buddy john he had a heck of a weekend so that should be a great setup then we've got a new segment brand new segment tonight I am so excited to introduce the ATI CTS 30,000 foot view. I think this is going to be a big hit and a great addition to the show where what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the mailbag. I mean, I get emails, Facebook comments, YouTube comments. They're coming through Instagram now. Maybe have had one Twitter question. Oh, and then the domain, the blog site. I'm getting all these questions, and it's time to start talking about it. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but it's really helpful to actually pe read people's real questions and comments. And that's going to be the 30,000-foot 30 30, foot view, which is where we're going to talk about real people and the real market and real news, what's going on. So anyways, that's going to be interesting. Okay, then we're going to go into our car hauler maintenance update interviews. I've scheduled way too many people tonight, so this show's going to go forever. Um, and then we're going to go into the live panel after some interviews and on and on. I mean, we've got Hotshot Dave, Jason Kendall of Kendall Enterprises, John of Paladin Enterprises, Don of 929 Transport, and of course, my good friend and business partner, Ty Thompson of CTS Business Coaching. This is a full show. It's going to be off the hook. 
So what I want you to do is I'm going to come right back. We're going to go into the live chat. You're not going to want to miss this. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Awesome. Okay, and remember, we're live on YouTube and on Facebook. So I'm going to go into the YouTube chat first, but it looks like Facebook is working. What's up, Ziggy? What's up, Mickey? What's up, Bill at Bad Apples? So, <laughs> I, just, I just said I was going to do YouTube first. You see what I did there? Okay, hey, man, it's Tuesday. You're darn right it's Tuesday. It's that time. It's kind of fun because Tuesday night, you know, that's why I did Tuesday night like what else is going on on Tuesday night? Not a whole lot. So it's Tuesday. Now we got a reason to celebrate Tuesday. Uh, Ty, is this where you find the repair shop? What's up, Ty? Welcome to the live chat and the show. We're going to be hearing from you soon. Um, yeah, man. I mean, dude, you know, this, in fact, this wasn't my idea. None of this was my idea. Okay, some of it was. But tonight's topic was Don's idea from 929 Transport. He was like, he, he said to me a while back, he's like, you know, you really need to do a show about maintenance, repairs, and cost, and yada yada could be a huge show, and it's such a pain in the butt, you know, and all this stuff. I'm like, no, let's do it. So we scheduled it, and here we are. Um, and okay, so I'm back in the live chat. Oh, hey, it's Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. What's up, Marcus? How you doing, buddy? Uh, Frank Wright, SNA Logistics here. Sue is with us. Hey, what's up? It's that time again. What's up, Sue? Hotshot Dave, is this where I get schooled? <laughs> that would be your show, Dave. This is where we talk about... See, what's cool is I think I've, I think I've figured it out. Um, I, I'm clearly not a driver, and I can't teach anybody how to drive and load and strap down and... You know, I, I you know what I like, Dave? I like that in your videos, you're actually at the truck stops and stuff. I'm not there. I'm at my desk. So when it comes to, you know, talking rates and talking markets, this is my domain. In fact, some of the phone calls we've had lately and the stuff we've been doing at the trade shows. So when we work together, it's amazing what we're going to accomplish. It's pretty cool, man. So I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on the show. Frank, Sue, Dave, hey, looks and sounds good. Thank you, Kimberly. Mwah, appreciate it. Uh, Seda V. Maureen, hey, it sounds great. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I didn't butcher your name too bad, but I just I took a running start at it. Let's do this thing. Uh, does anyone know of a lease company? See, and this is why I tell people that email me, etc. I'm like, join the live chat. You wouldn't believe. You can get your questions answered faster in the live chat than you can listen to me blabber all day hey car haulers first cross-country trip hauling these teslas wow that's interesting keep us posted brian carlos hey acb logistics mm hey what's up transporters david aruki how are you i'm great david thanks for tuning in buddy uh kendall Tran kendall enterprises is with us what's up jason thanks for tuning in long trip yo whoop dot us Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, and there's your information for Murphy Auto Transport. She might be full, though. I mean, so you got to get it while the getting's good. But we do have other referrals, but Sue is um, Sue is the best, really. It's, uh, Sue, Sue has so much information, it'll make your head spin. Uh, head spin dispatch. Tim, LRT Transport, LLC, what's up? Easy Auto Ship. Hey there, eco Ecosystem. What's up, Easy Auto Ship, man? Thank you. We got Bogey Joe Sr. What's up, Bogey Joe? Sweet. What's up? We got Carlos Braxton. Did I already say that? Am I living in a deja vu? The one and only is with us. What's going on? The one and only man. Now, that guy, that guy is part of the core. I mean, since the very beginning. I love that. That's so cool. Uh, like when, when I was put on a rock concert, there was like one dude standing there with his arms crossed. That was the one and only. 
uh, Tim LRT, Jay Elliott. You're the new guy. Hey, welcome, Jay. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for letting me know. Because, man, I just... I can't even remember anymore. Artie from Seven Seas Transport. Mark from Superflow Gerard. This is my Fox 5 channel. That's exactly right. In fact, I will tell you guys, we know a secret. There's a couple guys, there's a couple executives right now watching, just kind of checking out the show. So, um, I hope they're liking it. Born to Hustle. Hey, Hans. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Mark Devins, about to leave on a trip. This is the perfect way to start. Right on. That's so cool. And you know what I what I want to do, guys, is I want to turn this into a podcast so you can listen while you're driving. I will I will do that. Um, so many things going on at once. Celia T. Garza. Hey, Colin Thomas, what's up? And then, uh, oh, Jason Huber, what's up? He's Jason Huber saying what's up to Ziggy Keller. So, all right. Hey, what's up, Jason? I'm here too. Uh, hey, what's up, Jordan? Uh, Vince, what's going on? Vince is here. Ship your car now. Let's see. Sally, Ziggy. Man, this is great. Thank you, guys. Wayne Campbell's with us. What's up, Wayne? All right, you guys. Listen, I want to thank everybody for being here. It really means a lot. That wraps up Hello Live Chat. We got through it. Uh, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and I'll see you in a second. Historically, buying and selling wholesale vehicles is time-consuming, expensive, and loaded with risk. With ACV, our 20-minute online auctions provide immediate access to thousands of dealers who are ready to buy. Our inspectors complete comprehensive condition reports right at your dealership. From engine fluid levels and OBD2 scans to paint meter readings and tire tread depths with tons of high-res photos, our condition reports take the guesswork out of wholesale. The ACV team comes to your dealership, inspects the vehicles you'd like to sell and loads them into the app and you're selling vehicles in no time there are no fees for running a vehicle that doesn't sell and you don't have to worry about transportation to a physical auction see how acv can work with your dealership at acvauctions.com that's no joke you guys know about acv auctions acvauctions.com forward slash ati go there sign up there's been a lot of talk about load boards lately. In fact, I think I got a little bit in the industry. Oh, <laughs> that was a drum beat. Hey, who wants to go? Thank you very much, Kimberly. Who wants to go to industry news with me? Let's do this thing. And by the way, if you're just joining in, don't worry. You haven't missed a thing. I just I said hello to the live chat. Please do feel free to join. This is the What's That Gonna Cost show. We're talking to see that. <laughs> I got a better picture of this like truck at the bottom of, a, of an embankment hopefully you're not looking at that kind of cost but that's what your insurance company's thinking that's why they're like nah that's gonna be like uh, 20k because they're thinking you're gonna end up at the bottom of a ditch you know and you see it a lot man these flipped over wedges and stuff it's freaky it's 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 really freaky all right here let's do some industry news some people call me car hauler but the ones that matter, call me dad. Yep, yep, yep. And just like that, everyone in Spring Hill forgot about all those chicken sandwiches and became experts on unions in the automobile industry. <laughs> oh, man. I, I can Personally, I kind of like this kind of stuff. Because it is so true. Week after week, you know, panic button, panic button, panic button. My gosh, can we take a break? People. Um, by the way... In case you missed class, we went ahead and put it on the bumper. If this is you, <laughs> please move over. And there's a car on his bumper. Now that's funny. I mean, he probably took it at a, or did he take that? He took it while he was driving. He like, yeah, let's see here. Let me see if I can get a shot of that while he's driving. That is awesome. Um, now this is DAT load board. That's freight. But when the load board goes down, ah. <sighs> Uh, uh, pretty much sums it up for like half of it seem doesn't it seem like it it seems like it like oh my god what do we do now honey load boards down what's he talking about honey what else we got here drivers watching rookies struggle so they can post the aftermath to truckers wall of shame it's not that kind of show hey what's up andre what's up so rule turbish Thanks for tuning in, buddy. 
But you do see this. You do. This is why you're not always safe. You see, you know, you can't post everywhere. You got to be careful. This guy's hanging around the trees. <laughs> what does that even mean? You do not. I repeat, do not wear flip-flops while driving an 18-wheeler. Now, listen, I obviously don't care. I got my flip-flops on, too. But you do see a lot of flip-flops out there. It is. It, I think it does. But, you know, if everybody wants to, people, you want to be comfortable. Hey, I just want to be comfortable. It seems <laughs> it seems like it would be hard to do the job. Like, you know, you know, find the flip-flops. This is, I, I don't even know how this ended up in here. This is pretty weird. Where's the radiator? That would have been a good, maybe that would have been a good alternate, al alternate uh, thumbnail for tonight's video. Where's the radiator? So, you know, see, to me, if you were driving on flip-flops, this is what would happen. I don't know. Maybe this, you know, like, oh yeah, I forgot to, I was so busy, like, checking my flip-flops, I forgot to put that dang thing in park. Um, now, this is just a trick shot, actually, by the way. See, so, look, if you look, you know, you kind of, let's do a slow zoom. Look at that. Look at those special effects. But, uh, bang, this thing's like a movie studio. See, now, it, right, it looks like the car's on the pickup. Ah, that's just, those are just movie tricks. Trick photography. It's just a trick. See? It's another movie trick. It's just a, it's just a, it's a trick. They're just trying to trick you. Oh. Speaking of movie tricks. Do you guys hear this one? Oh, man. Say it ain't so, dude. I mean, I know we saw this headline before, but you know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who likes this headline. Because you guys know this. So I was put out of service for not having an ELD, but current paper logs. I'm driving back home to have the ELD put in the truck. I just had stated, I just started with this company. So we're waiting on the ELD. So he put me out of service for 10 hours, but after the 10 hours, I can continue to drive? What is this? Can I just drive? You know who likes this story about Secretary Chow? This guy, the entire time, he shut down for his ELD. That is stupid. Okay? I, oh, there I said it. What, what, did he, what did he say about my ELD? I said it's stupid. It is stupid. Hours of service, ELD, call it what you want. Did you guys see the story about the guy that went on, uh, he was at the FMCSA listening session and said, I never follow your rules? Google it. Right? <laughs> How many cops do you need? <laughs> that, is, that is priceless. Right? How many, how many? Oh, man. That is awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you. All right, then. Um, did you hear that the, uh, do you read this? Cat scale prices are up slightly beginning September 18th. Yep. And, and here's what happens. They say, well, it's only a buck, you know, or I don't know what it is. It's only 75 cents a pound. I don't know what it is. I don't. That sucks. I should have read the article. There's too many articles and there's too many fees. But the point is somebody's going to say, well, it's just a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if, if we take all 25, 30, 35, line items of all my fees and we say that's just a little bit yeah that was basically that's how i was going to feed my family so so cool so i'm driving for free now awesome sweet so that you guys can buy another yacht that's great uh this is what's wrong with the trucking industry people who lease you on are making way more than the driver this was shared on facebook i found it very interesting all right this guy's doing the math let's see here uh okay so he's got four loads there there's the totals okay gross revenue 2400 minus fuel minus insurance minus pro rate let's see dispatching refused the load uh paid in full oh my god <laughs> what and cat scale prices have gone up so yeah mm. <clears throat> wow I'm pretty sure we're not getting braces again this year. I-10 East Freeway shut down indefinitely after barges hit bridge. Nice. Who was driving that? I hope your text went through. 
Uh, Pittsburgh PA loads are still available. If so, I need more money. Fourteen eighty-five isn't enough. Pay up, you cheap company. <laughs> so this is what we've come to. This is at least the with the advent of technology, you can make your voice known. That's pretty cool. It's a win. Um, here is a load. I think this is okay. It looks double listed to me. Maybe not. I don't know. Who's to say? Seems kind of similar. Anyways, 27 cents, 30 cents. Not a whole lot of profit in that. So then, our friend with the handy buttons said, Question, the Subaru need to be at 1200 to get a driver. You said on time delivery. What happens when a driver has diarrhea? He laid. I'm just asking. See? Um, I wanted to share this because, listen, we, we're talking about load boards and why prices are where they are. Um... Did you guys know that on the other end of the before the before the car ever even gets to the carrier, you know the deals are already made, right? If the deal is made and then the carrier calls and says, "No, I can't do it for three forty six. I need four forty six. and they say, "But that's the going. That's the price. That's what we quote quoted our customer. Okay, well you're going to need to call your customer back and tell them you you quoted it wrong, that the auto quoter was broken. Tell me my business in a van down by the river. Okay. <laughs> Uber of car hauling. United rolled rose out new mobile platform to drive revenue. Now, this definitely hit the news in the past week. You guys have seen this, right? And we're going to learn more about it. Um, it's called Hawley. H-A-U-L-L-Y.com. And, I mean, United Road's really excited about it. I hope that carriers are excited about it. Um, it's supposed to be the new latest, greatest load board. Um, you guys know that, I mean, I talk about lots of different technologies on this show. So, I mean, it's news. We're talking about it and I hope to find out more about it in the coming days. So, so there it is. What else we got here? Oh, here's more news. Carrier exchange. What is carrier exchange? Well, Stay tuned because we're going to find out more of what Carrier Exchange is. This email just went out this week. It's a better way to subcontract loads. You're going to want to know about it. Uh, by the way, here's another news story. Amazon orders 100,000 electric delivery trucks from Rivian. Right? So, like, who cares? No, actually, this is an important story. Uh, number one, that's a lot of electric delivery trucks. Number two, who's Rivian? And number three, who's going to transport them all? Okay, so what large fleet carrier is getting this deal? That's going to be really interesting. You're going to want to know. And by the way, this isn't going to be the only load. And by the way, are they going to be able to make them all? And by the way, will there be other uh, manufacturers that end up on this list? So this, this, this kind of stuff, listen, if you want to follow the money, right? Because you you're, you're welcome. Dude, you are welcome. You're welcome to, oh, here we go. You're welcome to stare at 27 cents a mile all day. Sure. And, 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 you know, get upset about it. And yeah, you're, and you're, you're plain old welcome. Or, or you can follow the news, find out what's happening, find out who's hauling it, who's making these deals and start to drink from further up on the water hose. Don't wait at the end with the little sips and the sippy cup and the little spoons. Get up there with your big cup. Get them big old drinks. Find out what's going on. Get informed. Make some money. Build a business. I'm telling you, I know for a fact that it's not it's not just me saying it. I just talked to a guy the other day, once again confirming. He said, hey, I know a lot of carriers aren't going out and getting the business, so I'm going out and getting the business, and then... I'm subcontracting to carriers. He just straight up told me. That's what's happening. That is what's happening, folks. So listen, stick around. We're going to be right back. At Sun Country Trailers, we're committed to manufacturing durable car haulers that get the job done safely and efficiently. Our skilled team hand builds each next generation anniversary edition five car hauler using precision cut parts for industrial strength and ease of loading, ensuring premium quality you can rely on. 
its low profile, star-punched flooring, hydraulic systems, and three-point ratchet straps allow for safe and easy loading while the tube frame and powder coat finish provide unmatched durability. The angled curve at the front of this car carrier allows for more room in the first two positions. Designed for moving minivans, SUVs, and crossovers, the additional space also allows for more creative loading. There are a wide variety of optional upgrades to choose from, such as heavy-duty ramps, LED light packages, flip-out extensions, and more to create the perfect hauler for every job. Whether you're hauling regionally or nationally, low profile or high profile, trust Sun Country Trailers to go the distance. Learn more online at suncountrytrailers.com or give us a call at 866-887-2453. Okay, definitely want to check out Sun Country Trailers. All right, here's what we do. Hold on, we're trying something new. Okay, so let's do... Let's see here. Where are you at, Jay? Video capture device. Hang on, I got to change the camera. Because what we're going to do is, tonight, one night only, okay. Uh, we've got, um, we got John of Paladin Enterprises. He's here with us. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and close that. Okay, John. Can wait a minute. Wait a minute. John, can you see me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. I'm I'm on I-75, head north out of London, Kentucky. My office chair is doing 72 miles an hour, and uh, I can't watch TV, buddy. Right. That's right. No, you can't see me. But you're, okay, so you're driving. You're calling in, and there's a reason you're calling well, in. And and, yes, that, and by Chris. the way, listen, I want to say this. Number one, John, thank you for joining the show. Thank you for taking the time. Um, in case you guys don't know out there in TV land, John and I go way back. I used to dispatch for John. Oh, yeah. Right? Like this. We had some good times. Man, we, I mean, and we had some horrible times. We had some horrible good times. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so here we got dispatcher, driver. And I mean, we, dude, how long did we work together? Two, three years? Yeah. And then, and then you took a hiatus and then I, uh, went through a series of, of gentlemen and then finally we got back together and did a little, little, uh, trucking together until you became famous. Right. Now I'm famous. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm still, I got dispatcher on my hat, but you, you're no. with, you, you're working with Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. Was she on tonight? Yes, she's off, dude. She's here all the time. It's the best. And I, fantastic. She she's fantastic. She is. Well, let me tell you something, fantastic. man. I I don't mean to lead into the segment. Yeah, do it. But you know, i've I've been having some I've been having some difficulties with the truck. You know. Oh uh, yeah. Well, and so, it was eventual, from, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. But you know, from garage to garage, you get like a twelve-year or a twelve-month warranty, right? Okay. So this last garage I was at, you know, I'm like, hey Sue, you know, this is what I got going on, and so I think she gave me this crazy mountain pass to climb <laughs> to make sure that the truck, you know, if we're gonna go out of warranty, we're gonna do it in one run, right? So she sent me over some crazy mountains today. Uh -oh. Beautiful pictures. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. What state are you? But oh, I, you're I, in Kentucky. Oh yeah, yeah, and I, I left Charlotte. Uh, left Charlotte this morning. But I, th I think she really wanted to find out if the truck was going to make it or not. So um, I've survived, and it, it's going great. So, but now she's fantastic. The whole crew there at, at Murphy Auto Transport is fantastic. So I mean, if you need anybody to dis dispatching, not to make this a commercial, but uh, just a great group of people to work with. It, no, it, I always joke with Sue. Well, so. I told her, I said, listen. I'm going to dish on you tonight, so that was the thing. She, but yeah, she so the is truck, awesome. The truck's running great. And the yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so but how was your weekend? I was at a jury inn with my feet kicked up, having two meals a day on the hotel. Wow. Other than that, uh, the garage, you know, uh, I, got, I got to a garage that closed at 5. Of course, it took two hours for the tow truck to get me. And he only drug me five miles, but he was coming from some other thing, you know. And by the time they got me in, I mean, the garage people were trying to get me through as quick as they could. And it was like a half hour before closing. And they're like, 
we could do this and you could probably get on the road or, and I said, no, I'm staying. We're going to get to the bottom of this. And so the people at the garage, which is our cars, trucks, and RVs, and they're in uh, Concord, uh, North Carolina, fantastic group of people, Josh and Jason down there helped me out a lot. Uh, we finally got to the bottom of the problem. They said, you're not leaving here until we get it figured out. Very reasonably priced. Um, and they gave me a pickup truck to go to the hotel. So I had, I had a, a means to and from the hotel. I'm like, I got to drive somewhere. He's like, I'll give you a pickup truck. Just go. I'll see you Monday. So, I mean, they were fantastic. Wow. That what a is, great breakdown. That is what really a great cool. breakdown. That, 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 yeah. what, I a, mean, what a great breakdown. Well, you know, most of my breakdowns are pretty good. Seriously. I mean, there's, there's, you, you can, you can break down and you can cry about it and you can boohoo. They can post it on Facebook. Who cares? It's a vehicle. It's a machine. It's going to break down. This thing's got 109 or 890,000 miles on it. Like, how long do you think all these parts are going to hang together, working in tandem before you have an issue, you know? And uh, what made it a great breakdown? I delivered all the freight that was on board, which was my cars. Um, I had one that was heading north. And uh, I broke down five miles away from the garage. That's lucky. The guy gave me a pickup truck. Man, five and miles. So, How was your tow bill? Five miles. What was your tow bill? 300 bucks. Wow. And if you go to the, if you go to the Paladin, uh, LLC Facebook page, okay. you can see how pretty that tow truck was. Did you see it? Yeah, no, I did see it. I was, uh, so I'm sharing some oh, images dude. on screen. The ones that you shared. Yeah. 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 They were, I mean, a superhero tow truck came to get me. I said to the tow truck driver, I'm like, superheroes work for free. This is awesome. So I didn't get a bill from them. Well, they really, man, they got but, you pretty pulled apart but, in the garage, don't they? How many problems did yeah, you have? Yeah. Well, I want to finish up with this tow bill. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, CTR, <laughs> CTR picked up the bill and then, you know, just added it in. So it wasn't like I was getting hammered with bill after bill after bill. Okay, good. So so let's let's talk about what happened this year. Okay. Um, we've had a very, very expensive year. You know, um, I don't, I'm not out there 24 uh, seven in my business is part-time driving and uh, mostly full-time as a magician tour in the United States. So I'm out maybe three, four months out of the year tops and I'm not driving 500 miles a night. So it's not like I'm beating this thing, right. but it's had its problems and uh, beginning uh, in like March, April, May area. I was like May, I want to say. I started to get this thump in the back of the the truck. Mm. Like um, like you're pulling a trailer and the fifth wheel's not tight. You're getting this bang. Mm -hmm. So I got uh, I got a buddy of mine that's in Nashville, and his name's Jason. He's with Extreme Diesel, and he's a mobile diesel mechanic. He's he's worked on me before. I said, Jay, Jason, can I come down? Let's let's take a look at this thing. And he goes, Hey, dude, I think. One of the problems that you have right now is you got a problem with your um, the set of carrier bearing of your of your drive shaft. So we replaced that, replaced the universal, went on the way. Things are going pretty good. Got out to Kansas City, broke down again. And um, that time it was bubbles in my fuel and a pin fell out of my turbo. Uh, the the uh, turbo actuator, the little arm goes up and down. It's like a fork thing. And there's a pin that goes in there. Well, the pin rusted away, fell apart. Truck started around like crap. So uh, after spending an evening in the garage, the next morning, the guy found the problem, put a pin in. Um, so my six or $700 evening was really uh, a 25 cent part, if that. Okay. So I got to rolling and it kept banging and um, I kept having bubbles in the fuel and they couldn't figure out what it was. And, you know, they find an air leak, but they wouldn't find the bubble issue. And so I just, you know, didn't have a choice, kept going. So I got into, I was like heading home, three cars to drop off in Pittsburgh. I probably got 275 miles to go and the transmission goes in this thing. I lose 10th gear Ooh. going down a hill and I don't have ninth gear. <laughs> it's so it's like, uh. so uh, my goal was to get through the day, drop the load and get home. And I made it and I made it. Wow. And, uh, 
I literally – that was a great breakdown because, A, I made it home, and, uh, and B is that I was down for three weeks. So I, I didn't work for three weeks, but it was in between us – trucking and getting ready to go on on the road on tour with the magic show so i lost three weeks of pay but they gave me time to focus on the stuff i had to do to get ready for summer took all summer to get the transmission apart because the guy that does transmissions was backed up and i had a guy take out the transmission so we get all this done transmission gets done they call me they said you want to put a clutch in well let me tell you people if the transmission's out put the clutch in because if not, you're going to do it later and you're going to hate yourself for it. So they put it all in. Um, I got back on the road here right after a week after Labor Day. And I was told everything was great. And I got in. It started banging again. And I'm like, man, I can't oh, bring this man. out. And uh, and nobody, nobody could. I'd been to a couple garages. Nobody could figure out what it was. It was a mystery. And uh, so finally, it got really bad. And I was down here going into Charlotte. And it sounded like. It's not like the drive shaft to drop because I hear something dragging back there and I crawl back and the whole truck's together. I don't know. I can't get up the hills. Uh, once it gets in gear, I'm good, but I couldn't keep it in gear. And I'm like, transmission's going out in this thing. Wow. So I call the transmission shop and I'm like, listen, I'm going to try to get home. But if not, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do because it's under warranty. Well, here, after I dropped my cars off and I had one car that's heading up to Lexington, that's when the axle snapped. Oh, and I'm like, that's it. So I'm that. on the side of the road. Whoa. Dude, I'm on the side of the road. There is, like, I'm safe. Um, I turn on my Garmin. I find CTR. I call Josh. Josh is like, dude, I'll get the tower out there to you. I'm like, okay. Um, what do I do next? I made myself lunch, and I crawled in the bunk and took a nap for an hour. Yeah. That's right. What are you going to do? What are you, you can't do anything. What are you going to do? No. I mean, I'm going to do, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I quick, mean, I'm like, okay. Quick, check Central Dispatch. I, oh, yeah, no, no. That's <laughs> why you have Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. He yeah, goes, Sue, right. listen, we got a little problem here, you know? I'm, I'm in gear and I'm not going anywhere. So, <clears throat> you know, I just kind of, I hung out. I'm, I'm so over breakdown. I was so glad to break down. I mean, I told my wife when I was in Pittsburgh, leaving, I'm like, let me tell you something. Somewhere along this journey, I'm going to be on the side of the road. And I might actually get towed this time. Because I just, I got to ride this till it blows out. Because everywhere I went, I was like, I don't know. It could be. It could be. Well, hear what it was. And there's pictures of it. Yeah. The carnage. The carnage. Um, I'm up here. Spider. Yeah. I don't know anything about this stuff. So, I mean, I used to help my dad with it. So, I get there. Uh, a half hour before the shop closes, they pull a foot of the axle out, set it down, and go, there's your problem. I go, okay, what caused that? They go, oh, it could be this or that. It could be something else. I'm like, no, I'm not buying that. just broke. We got something going on with this truck. So they, they came back Monday, and they're like, you got a lot of shavings on the inside of the rear end that they showed me. And what happens when you take that pumpkin ball apart, for those of you who don't know, there's a little chunk. It was, it was the rear. There's there's two rear ends. This was the back one that drives the truck. There's probably like a two foot chunk of drive axle coming from one rear end to the other. And the guy takes that apart and says, you're going to have to replace the universal. I said, fine. So he pulls the front off the pumpkin ball and the thing in the back. And what I didn't know is, is they have two magnets on each side of that rear end on the inside. So if you start breaking or things are coming apart, the magnets will keep it out of the gears as much as it can nice. so that it doesn't go in. And yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's I, and cool. so he opens it up and he goes, you see all this sludge in here? It's all silver. I'm like, yeah, there's pictures. Uh, he goes oh, you know, that's the problem. You got something coming apart. He goes, it's more than just this. So he goes, how about we take this big gear thing out? And there's like, oh, there's a metal, you can see the big gear thing. And then there's yep. like a metal, yeah. I don't know. I call it like a metal drum. He goes, inside of that is spider gears. He goes, you want to make sure that you haven't got any chunks of junk in there. And, you know, at this point, you get going through your head, all right, am I getting led down the path of we're just kind of like, hey, we can get another couple bucks, hundred bucks here and another. But with these guys, I didn't feel that way. 
guys down at CTR, he's like, dude, I think you should do this. And I'm like, I, we're going to do it because at this point, no one solved the problem. And so they said, we'll get it to the gear shop now. They sent that out at 11 o'clock, and by 3.30, it was back and rebuilt. Wow. Ready to get that truck. I am talking like right now. I mean, there was just no way. The new axle was sitting there. Of course, they had that Friday. But then after, I mean, they made the call. The thing was sitting there. They're like, we can get sent you out. No, no. He says, do you want to clear on? I said, dude, take it all apart now. I want it all taken apart. Because I'm not going to go down the street and mess up whatever we're doing. And um, and that was a great call because when they sent that, they sent that new um, rear end and the big gear and the new spider thing in. They sent it with a box of parts, and it was all garbage. I mean, the inside of that spider gear was just trashed, and there was nothing left of the inside. And he's like, you've been doing 70 miles an hour. You're lucky you got away with what you did. And, you know, here's the secret. Pull it over and park it <laughs> because you'll just make it worse if you continue. I mean, it's yeah. already bad. Right. You're going to have to pay it, you know. But I think um, realistically for me, when I'm looking at all this stuff, I'm like, it's disappointing to break down. You know, it's expensive. Outside of that, if you're not hurt and you haven't killed anybody or hurt anybody, that's a good day, dude. That's a good day. And the fact that um, everybody that I have had running with during my last six months, eight months or whatever – they have all been super genuine, super helpful. Again, Sue at Murphy, you know, I call her, I said, Sue, here's what's going on. She's like, oh, boy. And I'm like, okay, here's what they're telling me. And, you know, she takes care of all of the clients, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, and we lost a couple, you know, good paying loads coming out of their Friday. Yeah, out that of happens. Carolina. Yeah. yeah. And, and, now, and now we're kind of band-aiding to get me to a point where we can get back to, you know, loads on our terms making better money so i'm on that band-aid run just to kind of tidy stuff up and get in a better spot but that's it i mean money's gonna come or go and i'm gonna tell you something else every piece that i hang on here brand new is one less piece i gotta worry about failing none of this used garbage not doing any of that i'm not band-aiding it somebody said oh you were grinding the gears no i ain't grinding no gears at all um that because, you know, I mean, this thing had a million miles, not a million, 700 and some thousand miles when I got it. Um, and my cousin who owned the truck uh, had only had it Dude, 10 months. It was, so he, it was beat he up had, when he got he never, it. I used to dispatch for Phil. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I'm going to tell you what. I got into places I saw duct tape. And I wasn't oh, sure about sure him, whoever. You know, yeah. and let me tell you. Oh, I guarantee hey, you know, people want to hear about breakdowns. Oh, I had the mother load. Wait. The, my first my first big load to Arizona. Oh, you no. Know. Yeah, no. All right, so I tell you what. Hold on to the Arizona story. That's true. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going. I'm doing Tell something me. new tonight. All right, I got this waiting room in my Zoom meeting. So I'm going to put you back in the waiting room. We're going to take a quick back break. I want you to stick around for All the right. live panel. Will you do that? I'll stick around for the live panel. Dude, stick around for the live panel. Everybody else, All right. we're going to be right back. Welcome, Welcome to the to GoFer, Gopher Driver, Driver app, app training, training tutorial. tutorial. Once, Once it is, it is open, open, you can enter your, your username, username and password, password then, then click, click log, log in. in. The, first the first screen you arrive to is a, is a list of all stop locations, locations assigned, assigned to you. To you. Click, click arrive. arrive. Tap, tap photos, photos to take pictures of the vehicle. vehicle. In this, In this screen, screen, select, select your, damage your damage codes, codes and, tap and tap on the affected area of the vehicle and then click save. AIAG codes are required for OEM damage reporting. Select your options and add codes as needed. The last button to click is load. You can also input the customer name and email address if they want a copy of the order. The delivery process is very similar to the pickup process, except now you are unloading vehicles, then working through to the outgate. If you have any additional questions, feel free to call 760-267-9040 or email support at gopher.com.
process that how you are unloading the Hey, Jay, it's me, Ty. Can you hear me? Audio. I can hear you. I'm adding, check, check, check. Now there I am. Okay. So <clears throat> give me a mic check. Check, check. Okay, mic check. Hey, we got it. We even had like that microphone check feedback stuff. So here's what's going on, guys. We're going to try something new. This is the very first 30,000 foot view. Okay, and we're going to spend a few minutes talking about what's been going on with customers recently. Now, I hear something in the background, but I don't know what that is, Ty, so I'm going to mute you for a second, okay? Now, listen, it's really important. It's a big part of auto transport intel when, oh, and then look at this. I got our names on the wrong sides. How do you like that? Okay, let me fix that. I'm Jay, he's Ty, and together we are j and ty all right okay so listen what we do is we get every day i get i mean i get youtube comments emails facebook messages comments on the blog post and what we're going to do is we're going to share a couple you ready to look at this i'm ready okay and we haven't even really ready. and we we haven't even talked to okay we're going to try and speed round some of this stuff it's going man that was really interesting talking to john about his breakdown stuff and we got more breakdown stuff dude if you like crashes costs repairs and breakdowns boy oh boy is this the show for you all right here we go first of all i want to say this is that what's cool is canine auto transport he he checked into the show he wanted to find out what was going on to see if we could help and and so what we did is we talked i talked to i think i sent him over to you and I think maybe you talked to him. I can't be sure. But my point is that what I did is I encouraged him to advertise and market his dispatch services. And then he shares this with me. He's doing it. So that's that's somebody actually doing something with some of the advice that we gave them. I think that's Rami. Oh, it's Rami. Okay, cool. Here's Now here's one. We talked about this very briefly today. Um, and let's see if I can change up. Mm, okay. All right, so we're, we're going to do side-by-side. Side. All right, fine, we'll do side-by-side. Side. Okay, so listen to this. Thanks for the ad. Gearing up to jump into the business. Home base will be Central Florida. Any input is greatly appreciated. Work is slow, at least for car hauling. I'm going to do cars and freight. Work is horrible in Florida right now. Hold off as long as you can. Point is, is that we tell we try to tell people, listen, there's some states that unless you need to go there, don't go there. And when we see uh, independent confirmation somewhere else, I think that's helpful. Oh, the video's freaking out. Okay, how about this one? Here, Here's a good one. You're going to love this. Hey, what's up? I need car hauling dispatch. My uncle is living in Orlando. He has an F-350 with a trailer for three cars. But wait, there's more. Check this out, Ty. Uncle has an F-350. My uncle doesn't speak English, so if there's a dispatcher, Portuguese or Spanish, that'd be helpful. So we talked about this. Is that, what, what's that guy's name, Gene? Gene, I, yeah, I, I Gene. Sent, I sent Gene an email. Now, if you go back in the archive, it was in January of this year. Gene was on the show looking for work. He's teamed up with five other guys, and they're, <clears> they're, they've got some kind of auto transport company they're, they're building. So my point is this, Jay, what is the point? The point is, contact us, we'll see if we can help, and somewhere down the road, something actually connects. The hustle is crazy. I posted these two units for a friend. Look at this. This guy saw this posted for 2500 Or rather, he helped a friend post it, and a guy said, I'll do it for 2300 This is exactly what we're talking about. You know, people think that the stories of other guys lowballing and shooting themselves in the foot is just speculation. Here's a guy that actually shares it. He said it's 2500 The guy says, I'll do it for 2300 What are you doing? Why would you do that? It's posted. Yeah, I know, your phone rings off the hook. Having you on the show is not easy. People <laughs> constantly calling you. Um, here, this one just came in today. Hey, Jay, I got a question. 
I was wondering if there's a particular time of year when the car hauling... This one's for you, Ty. He's wondering if there's a particular time of the year when the car hauling industry gets busier than usual. And if so, when and where does it happen? He's in the Northeast in New Jersey. Thanks for any insight you may have. Also wanted to ask, how far out should I be looking to use a mentor such as yourself? I had a goal of starting my business in 12 months. Question. Is there a particular time of the year when the car hauling industry gets busier? Yes, that's what I said. And when is that time? <laughs> that's a good question. I think it depends on what you're doing. It's, it's not a one size fits all. If you're running off load boards, I found out today that now's the slow time of year. Hey, well, and that's, it's, I'm so glad you just said that because that's the thing. If you're running off load boards, yes, now is definitely the slow time of year. I mean, we're just starting to go into it because in about two months, those load boards are going to be so bad that you are begging for springtime. But if you have your own customers, I don't know. Is it? I mean, it's got to be better. Anything's better than living off the load boards. Yeah, I agree. But here, um, but here's the but here's the point. Here's the thirty thousand foot view. You can't. Would you start a business if let's say you give the advice? Okay, these are the good months. This is when you do it. Are you ready to start your business now? Now that you got that information? No. No. Matter of fact, you know what we were talking about earlier today? I did some research and I found an article. <clears throat> this guy says it's a current article too, 2019, June. This guy says a startup business generally does not show a profit for three years. Did you know that? Three years. Sounds like yeah, that. Sounds so he, gets, he gets more in depth than he says if you really need about one year's money set back so you can just get past the one year right sounds like the restaurant business <clears throat> well and like we talked about i don't know a couple days ago a week ago you you know look look at your business look at my business look at my first year in business i lost 20 grand seven years later i was cranking out some big numbers but I'm just trying to figure out how, how do you start a car hauling business regardless of equipment and really believe you're going to make money the first year. I, no, I'm not sure. Well, and on, and on that note, I mean, I, I was looking at, you know, you, you, we, we draw comparisons. It's nice. Actually, it's really helpful to draw comparisons regularly. And um, I was watching Joe Rogan. I was having lunch watching Joe Rogan, and he had an interview with a band, a band I really like. And they were talking about the early days, and it was just struggle this and struggle that. Everything is like that. Restaurants, car hauling, etc. But there, there seems to be this extra level of risk with as many people are getting into car hauling. You know, I didn't <laughs> share this one yet because, honestly, it's almost 9 o'clock, and we got to keep moving, but like uh, this one guy said something about how he keeps seeing businesses getting in and he keeps seeing people getting out. That's why there's so much used equipment posted for sale. Yeah, absolutely. So, so here's the thing. I mean, again, <clears throat> we get, we get blamed for being Debbie Downers and, you know, trying to tell people they're stupid, but <clears throat> so you know we get the call every day and, and believe me here's the thing I, I i don't mind having these conversations but i know it's, you know i know so because we sound right we're either we're either cheerleaders or downers right <laughs> yeah but it, i mean it's it's really common sense go pick up a book if you're gonna like i always say if you're gonna mow yards or clean toilets or haul cars whatever you're gonna do know the market, know the industry, know your customer, know your competition. So a lot of the phone calls I get, and I get, you know, Constant. quite a few. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Ty, I need a dispatcher and a load board. The rates are down. <laughs> I watched your Jay's videos and I love them. I need a dispatcher. All right. 
<laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm liking this moment. I'll tell you what. I want to I want to tell you guys something. See, here's the thing. And this is, you know what? You know what's really important? Ty, what we do, we lean in, lean in the camera with me. Okay, here's the deal. Folks took the time out of their busy schedules to watch this show. So they want they want some secret information. Ready? Here's some secret information. We talk about some of these things, and we're trying to figure out how not to sound like either condescending or ridiculous. Like we're telling, we do not, we're not here to tell everybody to be a car hauler. Oh my gosh. If we did that, I mean, what? The rates would be a dime, a dime a mile, right? It'd be down to a dime a mile. And if it gets to a dime a mile, we'll know that everybody that thought of it did it. And so whoever's dumping hundred dollar bills in seats, please start telling people how many of those hundred dollar bills went to expenses, maintenance, cost, and repairs, please. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what we're saying. Good secret. Uh, we love this business. I love this business. I've been doing it for 20 years. I've dedicated a channel to it. Jay's dedicated a whole channel to this business. We do care, right? We care enough. It's not that we don't want you here. We need you. Talk to the big boys. They've got capacity issues. Yes, they need drivers. So what you do is you take your fixed expenses and this is a good one too. I've this week I've done some different things in my coaching strategy to really kind of expedite things. So now what I'm doing is I'm starting out with you tell me how much money somebody at the truck stop told you you could make hauling cars. That's my favorite place to start now. I used to ask who's your customer, but now I just start with how much money do you think you can make a week? And by and the, I don't even Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm cutting you off. No, you finish. So I don't even argue with that anymore. I just, whatever number they say, eight grand, my one ton and three car. Okay, great. I don't even argue with that. Yeah, right. Whoever told you that number, I don't know who they are. I'd like to meet them. 8,000 okay? a month? I, yeah, I'm going to no, need 8,000 a month. A oh, a week. That's a right. Week. <laughs> a week. Oh, my gosh. What? And actually, we know a dispatcher that told us that somebody called her and said, I need $4 a mile per car. I'm not doing it. Okay, great. That'll be easy. <laughs> so, holy we take, what I do now is I take that number, that, that magic number that somebody heard, told them. I don't know where they got it. But <clears throat> we just say, okay, how much is your truck payment? Some people know and some people don't. How much is your trailer payment? Some people know, some people don't. What about insurance? I don't know. What about central dispatch account? 150 bucks a month. What about your cell phone? What about fuel? I don't know. I don't know. Well, how many miles per gallon are you going to get? I don't know. <clears throat> well, I'll give you some round numbers and I'll be real fair, real conservative. So we go ahead and start slicing through these numbers. And at the end, there's not a lot of room left, right? So... My thing is, is um, I'll be happy to help anybody get in the business. You know, <clears throat> we had a great conversation today. Do you need to go ahead and go to the interview? Because I can keep talking Are for you, an hour. Let's I, I, think you're, I think you're a mind reader because what I just did, bang, I just opened it up. Whoa. Dude. That was kind of crazy. So what I did is I just opened up, I just opened up the waiting room. And here we are. Whoa, this is crazy. So. Um, I know, man, that guys, that was like a surprise. It's like, whoa, Jay, like just hit the, I just hit the open, you know, admit waiting room button. And I think we're all live now. Like, whoa, that was crazy. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't catch me singing to the hold music. Well, you know what? Hey, I, I, I'm sorry. We didn't catch you singing to the hold music, by the way. <laughs> good. I'm really glad. Yeah. That, that would have been good. Okay, so we have with us, hey, Hotshot Dave, can you hear us? I can hear you. You're going to have to work with me because I stopped here and I'm on Denny's Wi-Fi because I have no service. Uh, no problem. But I'm going to do what I can do here. All right, good. Hey, Jason Kendall, can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you loud and clear, Jay. All right, cool. You're a little quiet, but we can hear you. Man, that boy's got the life there, Jay. Look at him. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Dude, hold on, hold on. It's, it's time to play Fortnite. What's up, Don? How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? Dude, Don. fantastic. 
Don, this was, hey, by the way, this was Don's idea. So let Don leave. Well, I'm on, Let's I'm go, on Don. Leave. Get yeah. it on. So, so Don, if this doesn't work, no, nah, I'm kidding, uh, man. This is, dude, it's already working. Do you know how many people want to talk about breakdowns, repairs, and maintenance? Oh, you, you, you could, uh, you could talk 24 hours a day, seven days a week with just two or three people about breakdowns. Everybody has them. <laughs> It'll put you out of business real, real fast. I'm glad you said that because here's what we're going to do. This is like that where you put your hands on the car, and if you're alive 24 hours later, you win. That's what this is. <laughs> so we're going to be here till 9 a.m., everybody. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my stories unless I got a cold beer in my hand. That's the only way I'm talking about it. It was horrible. Uh, hey, Jack. Yeah. No. What are you doing I-57 at a rest area for 24 hours and your truck don't run? What do you do then? I love your question. I don't know. Is this a rhetorical question? This was my last 24 hours. Really? You've been at a truck stop for 24 yeah. hours? Well, no, I'm good now. I had a uh, short in the wiring that I had. It took me 24 hours to find it. Oh yeah. man, you know what? That that Don doesn't that are you like are did you just get chills, Don? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've lost a lot of money. Yeah, tell us more about it, Dave. Did you send that stuff to the shop? You send it to the shop, that's a hundred dollar an hour to diagnose electrical issues. Yeah, hundred bucks so, hundred bucks an hour. You ain't gonna find that. Right. My, so I have my DPF system fixed, you know, quote unquote fixed. And uh, when they let unplug one of the wires, they just let it hang. Well, that wire rubbed on a piece of metal, and I accidentally found the prop. So really, you I, accidentally yeah. found like, the problem? I got problem? mad. I got mad, and I threw my hand. When I threw my hand, the truck fixed itself because I hit that wire. <laughs> so that's how I found out it was that wire. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was good and bad. What are you like? Time. You're like the Forrest Gump of trucking. Right. Oh, man. I, was, <laughs> I, almost, an hour. I almost fixed it with a lighter and a mat. That's awesome. What? You know, trucking's like yeah. a box of chocolates. Well, I want to know what yeah. else. Yeah. A real expensive box. That's for damn sure. Hey, man, that is awesome. It is. Don, this was your idea. I didn't know that. So what do you got for us? Oh, I just, I was thinking about it the other day, you know, and everybody wants to know how to make money. And I, I, me personally, I think it's more important to figure out how not to lose it because even if you made $8,000 a week, you blow your motor, you blow your tranny, you blow something. I mean, you know, most people don't have the credit to uh, give a guy, you know, $10,000 and then turn around and, he says he fixed it. You go 700 miles down the road. He says, yeah, I guarantee it. When you get to the next city you're going to and all the same shit starts all over again with a, you know, next thing you know, now you're another 10, you know, or 5,000 in, even if it's, you know, warranted. I mean, you can go, you don't just go, it's not like a $200 tire. I mean, everybody has tire issues. Everybody has brake issues. Everybody has fuel issues. I mean, I've blown hoses on a bridge. It happens, but it's the, it's the big stuff. That's what I was thinking, you know, the other day about the only thing we ever tried to do a lot of was like, well, you know, you're always waiting on cars. I mean, you're, you're, I've, I've waited so many times at a Mannheim where I missed a drop or something like that, or somebody's bringing a car around or whatever. There's about an hour I can usually go around and look for like metal shavings, things that don't smell right, don't feel right, you know. And so if you just, if you, all you can do is drive if you're just a, an ass in a seat you're going to get really, really, really in, in a big trouble because you've got to have at least some sort of mechanical ability to at least identify stuff. That's why you're stopped, you know? I mean, if I'm set at Mannheim, it's a hell of a lot cheaper for somebody to come out and bring me a radiator hose at Mannheim. Even Napa will do that than it is to sit on a bridge where the damn DOT is right next to me and they want to tow me for a thousand, you know, thousand dollars to get me off the bridge. I mean, you know, it's stuff like that, I think, is what, what's going to make or break a lot of people and because we talk about all the time how you make more money how do you make more money and really you know this this business sort of kind of has a cap to it 
I don't care how many trucks you have, it kind of caps. Like it, it does. I, I feel like it does. And then it's really a matter of how you don't spend your money. You know what I mean? Like you don't lose it. And maintenance is by far, I mean, insurance sucks and fuel sucks, but those are just little payments, you know, spread out over 12 months. Um, where maintenance, you don't know when it's coming. You have no idea. Next thing you know, you put a pull out back and you're all excited about it and the kids are swimming. Now yeah, you $20,000 that you got to put into a truck. And you're like, oh shit. You know, I mean, that's when it happens. So um, I, well, don't I, have, say, I, I don't have the answer to I've just, spent the 20 grand too many times, but I'm just saying it's something to think about, you know. <clears throat> this is John. I was stuck in Kansas City. They're working on my truck. And, uh, an older husband and wife had sold their home and all that, bought one of those big rigs with the whole sleeping quarters. I mean, this truck went on for a mile and they came in on a hook and they had just had something done to the motor and the, uh, the fan flew apart, flew into the radiator, took the radiator out. So I don't know how long, how far they were towed, but they pull them into the Petro and uh, they're waiting to get some sort of quote to get back out on the road. And they had no money. I mean, they were spent out. They had dogs in the truck. They were living in the truck because that was their home. There was no place for them to go to, uh, to regroup. It was like, okay, you're in the garage. You got to spend it. They had no money. And they were sitting there waiting to see what family members they could reach at midnight from all over the country that they could even get parts. So they're trying for a quote. The guy goes, hey, start on this just to start on it. 2800 bucks, and we haven't even got going yet, Damn. and that didn't include the tow. And so I'm looking at them going, you know, here's a couple people that don't have a house payment. Did they ever put the money in the bank? Were they living on the edge? I mean, you have got to put money away. If you're going to be an owner-operator, you've got to put money away, and it's got to sit there for the big nightmare. It's coming. And you're going to pay for it. And it, what are you going to do if you got no way and no access or nobody that's going to loan you money? I mean, I've been there. I've had family help me. Um, I've been there. We put on credit cards and most recently been paying right out of pocket. Um, you got to have that backup plan. You can't crawl in these things and drive and not have something that is going to be uh, capable of getting you home. So for those people that come home and spend everything they got and then jump back in and they got no, like they're starting out on a, on a two week run with 50 bucks. And we all know those guys and gals. Um, that doesn't work out because eventually you're going to, your numbers pulled and you're in trouble. So yeah. my heart, you know, that my heart was really bleeding for them. Now when I see that, you see uh, so many people like, uh, you know, the drivers that are driving for companies, ah, oh, screw it. You know, company truck, what do I care? They're going to put me up and get my paycheck, blah, blah, blah. But there's an owner somewhere that's bleeding that money out, trying to keep it together. And in the owner operator world, you know, that's a number of us. And you've got you've got to have that backup. You know, I'm about spent out. It's been an expensive year. I'm into funds from other entities, my businesses, you know, but I know that the, once I make these changes and we're running, it'll make the money back, but it isn't going to be today or tomorrow. So you, get, you need to get some tires on there when you put it all back together. I'm just saying, yeah, I saw, <laughs> but, uh, drive but, like slicks. They, I, uh, no, I, that's what I, was like, I thought you were in the shop for the tires. I was like, damn. <laughs> I, I stopped and bought a steer tire and a guy says, um, 475 bucks. I said, hung on and balanced. He goes, no, that's just for the tire in the window. I'm like, really? <laughs> let's, let's, let's get online and check this out. And he was right. I mean, the best price you can get was like four seventy five. I'm like, holy crap! Last what? time I bought a steer tire, it was three hundred fifty dollars. Now it's four seventy five for the same thing. Holy crap, dude! Seriously. Well, I'll tell you, you something know. that I do. That I mean, I don't know if a lot of people can do it or not, but um, you know, because we have semi trucks and stuff. But I, I'm signed up with uh, Rider. I get paid by Rider. No matter of fact, they take my money. So, but I signed up with them. And I can pick up a rider truck. And so say I've got a truck in Fort Myers that all of a sudden the turbo goes out and I got a load on there. I can't let it set. I, I'm going to lose my income for three weeks while they're 
pulling the whole motor apart for all the stuff coming out of the turbo, you know, went into the motor. <laughs> I got a truck. Yeah, I'm paying like probably 200 bucks a day or whatever it equates to, you know, but in all reality, I spent a thousand dollars a week for that truck or I don't make anything for three weeks. I mean, I started doing that right. like, back when we were doing over the road. It gets a little high over the road because they get you for the miles, like 15 cents a mile or something with it. But man, if, you, if I have a customer that I'm going to lose or I don't have any income coming in, I can't set a month, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So I've done oh. that a couple times. No, that's, and that's, that's a good backup plan too. That's a good backup plan. I mean, for me, it goes back to, I was always taught um, a penny saved is a penny earned. You know, the more I can do with my hands and fix my own trucks, the more I can save. You know, like if I would have sent my truck to the shop today, I'm looking at $1,000 to diagnose it, and they're not going to work on it constantly. It's going to take three or four days. You know, I spent 12, 14 hours under the truck. I saved that money, but yet earned that money. You know what I mean? And then it's fixed, and I'm on the road. And nobody wants your truck fixed as bad as you want your truck fixed. The longer it's in the shop, the more they can charge you, the longer they can charge you. So, I mean, what's the real incentive for them to get you on the road right away? You know, it's, and unfortunately, some shops think like that. You know, being over the road, they see you coming in with DOT numbers, out of state letters, and a full load. You got to do what you got to do to get it, get it going. And they know that, you know, I'm going to take advantage of you. But it looks like well, everybody I, else is home, so they don't have that problem. But you know, <laughs> well, I I can say I went out to Phoenix on my first big time trucking run, just green in the business, and I lost the turbo in Phoenix. And I went to, I went to a uh, a factory shop. I went to a dealer, and I'll tell you what, they greased the heck out of me. Oh my God, it was like a week for a turbo. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to come out of here, you know, not too bad. It was triple what I ever thought the bill was going to be. And I spent a week in a hotel. And that was insane. Oh, yeah. I was I was licking my wounds for a long time. Everything I made going out and back went right for that one breakdown. I mean, I ran into some good, good shops on the road, but I ran into some horrible ones, you know. I had a transmission put in in Ohio. I made it back to uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and the transmission was bad. I had to get a new one, you know? So it just, it, it, it's tough, and I don't, I wouldn't let anybody drive my truck, so I don't like to let them work on it either, you know? But that's just me, you know, because I'm able to do it. But the best thing you could do in this business is at least <laughs> learn the basics of mechanics in your truck, you know? Exactly right. Even the oil changes. You know, what are they in a big truck? $300 a piece? You know, if you're doing them every three weeks, you're saving yourself, I don't know, 900000 And buy a lot of the same trucks. Yeah, buy the, buy, I'll buy, every time I try to buy the same motor, same truck, because I guarantee I'm going to run into the same damn problem somewhere along yeah. the way. Yeah. I mean, every freight miner's had to, it might be a year, two years later, but every Detroit motor's had the same thing happen. Or I mean, every, every point where you can diagnose it, like call me and say, you know, hey, this, and I'm like, yeah, we just did that on the, and I'm thinking, I forget what truck we did it on, you know, so that happens a lot. Oh, I'm dealing with that on my Rams now. I'm like, I got to do this, this, and this. They're like, you just did that. No, that was two trucks ago, you know. Same thing. Ty's itching over there. Oh well, see, we bought all different trucks, so we it'd be like a crapshoot. We wouldn't learn anything. <laughs> it's gonna be a mystery. Every one of them's gonna be like, "Oh wow, didn't see that coming." How uh, could you? It's a different truck. Yeah, so that's the joy of building a fleet with whatever you got. Oh man, yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> it just sounds absolutely horrible. Well, that's why I bought a Dodge because I know the transmission's gonna go out of it, so I'm yeah. I'm ready for it. Yeah, you're using a little truck, one of the little one tines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, I liked about them is. Is that you can actually get down uh, your way to tow your truck if it breaks down? Oh yeah, I'd rather just leave my truck sit and have somebody you know come with a regular pickup truck and come get me. Yeah, you know, you got a lot more options with the small truck. Oh yeah, definitely. 
and you can take it to a dealer somewhere, and they're usually a little bit easier than a like, you know, Freightliner and Lobo and stuff like that. You know, going back to uh, talking about having parts delivered, hell, I've called Uber before. Yeah. And had the dude go to the parts store and pick up something to run to me at a parking lot or whatever. And Napa yeah. does it for free. I've had water pumps for a Dodge brought out twice, literally twice. Yeah. I was almost, I was worried it was the same Napa store when I was in Wisconsin. That's the second time <laughs> I went out. I was like, man, they're, <laughs> you're going to get tired of me calling them. But. It takes longer to get the parts than it does to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're paying for that service too. That ain't free. You know, yeah. they're sending that parts guy out there. You're getting a bill for that. Trust me, it's built in there. I don't know if Napa charged me. I think I gave the guy 20 bucks, but I, I Oh, no, I'm talking about at a shop. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jason, so you, you, you got hit. What happened the other day? Oh, said, yeah. yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, what happened? Uh, I had somebody run to the side of my trailer while I was parked the other day outside of Pittsburgh. What, how much time did you lose and money on that? I mean, was uh, it a big deal? No, I fixed it. I um, I had to cancel a load and uh, took the wheel off, tied the axle up, and just rolled it home uh, just on the rear axle and fixed it for about 250 bucks. And I've been running. I didn't really lose a day. I just lost that one car for about 400 bucks. So I'm out about 650 but... Well, I mean, it you know. could be worse, but I mean, what, the theme here is everybody, everybody's doing their own fixing, right? I mean, that's yeah. that, right. That's your bottom line. If yeah, you can't I, do your own fixing. That's why I bought a house with a lift in the garage. That's why I'm not man. a driver. It's... I'd be screwed. What would I do? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not crawling underneath and fixing squat, dude. I just, I, there's battles to be picked and that's not my specialty. There's, there's far better people than I to fix those things, you know. So I, I'm not I'm not mechanically inclined. So I'm that guy that's going to go to the garage and go, okay. But I've been, you know, my, my dad was a mechanic for 40, 50 years. I had uh, grown up doing some of this, but I'm not equipped to do it. Of course, I wasn't really expecting to be in the driving industry. So, um you know, well, everything to me is like a mystery. You're, you're, well, speaking of mysteries, you're the only professional car hauler slash magician I think I know of, right? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. So, you know, so over, over six months out of the year, Look, a you know, water I'm pump. on the road with and yeah. the transmission. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. You know, and, and it was weird because the years that we were building the show, you know, uh, we have a large family. There's six of us. And then we'd have animals like rabbits and ferrets. And so, you know, you can't, so, dude, I've been broke. I bought a really, I bought a, a, a 16 year old short school bus, which would accommodate the family. I could get the animals in the back and pull a 16 foot trailer. And let me tell you something. I went from Maine to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, actually New Orleans yearly. I can't tell you how much time. And, and I started fixing that. I mean, oh, geez, that was that was always good for like uh, two cases of Walmart bottled water and a broken hose somewhere, you know. And I was getting pretty good at MacGyvering that, but this semi, no, I'm not, you know. Hey, I can't afford to get hurt point. trying to fix this because it would, it would keep me out of the other things that I do. Well, so. and that's the thing. This thing is like a, it's a yeah. Your your semi is a center of. Uh, I mean, because you also do what is it? The hauling for the well. You, I know you do the pyro. But then you also do hauling yeah. for soundstage equipment, right? Soundstage, I hauled for the White House. I, you know, I've hauled a couple presidents. Uh, kind of crazy yeah. thing to be a magician, fall into trucking, and then you wind up, you know, working for the White House, the State Department. But yeah, I've done that. Um, and pyro, got hired for doing pyro. But because I was already in production and lighting and sound for years, the Union Stage and and doing shows. Um, the production companies knew I showed up and actually wanted to work. So when I wound up in the truck, it was like, Hey, can you do this? And then it just got to be where they wanted me to transport. And then that wound up, you know, uh, moving the presidents, a couple of presidents around and doing some campaign stuff. And so, it, I mean, it's been a bizarre ride. I mean, I, there was no plan. You didn't move the Colts no out plan. of Baltimore, did you? <laughs> No, no. If anything, I tried to help get the Browns out of Cleveland, man. Oh, my gosh. You know, train wreck. So, you know, I think if the Browns left Cleveland in the middle of the afternoon, nobody cared. They'd help. Nobody cared, yeah. Yeah, where are you going? 
Let's set you up. Let's set you up somewhere nice and warm. By, far away. by the way, so, okay. yeah, I, it's, it's, I want to say this. Adam Kane, he he's he posted in here that he backed his trailer in the garage last night, adjust the brakes. He found a broken wire to the brakes. No wonder the brakes didn't feel right. Maintenance and repair and cost, it's ongoing. It never stops. Yeah. Hey, I got to tell you, when I went to the garage down here in North Carolina, they found out that I had an air brake cage. What does that mean? I mean, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, what it means is they put a bolt in the end and they disengage it so they could have put the transmission in or done whatever. And whoever that was had this ca- this brake, this air brake, disengaged. So coming down to North Carolina, I'm like, man, this truck, even though I just had all the brakes done and all the rotors all the way around, or all the drums, uh, this thing wasn't stopping correctly. And the guy goes, why is that there? I said, gee, I don't know. What is that? And he told me and explained. I'm like, you know, I just don't know. And uh, you'd be surprised how much one additional brake chamber makes to stop your vehicle. I mean, it's uh, a lot different. But, you know, it was just somebody in a shop that forgot to do that. And I'm looking at that like, yeah, that's not right. One of these things ain't like the other. So it was bizarre. Um, the, these electric yeah. brakes yeah. and like the wedge and the two car trailers, they are notorious for the frame cutting the wire. Like, yeah, no matter what you do, I have to check my, I check it every time I get out. And eventually, once a week, I find one broke, cut. So, you know, it's just, they're notorious for that. And then you got the wire that goes through the frame. You know, it gets rubbed and shaped in there. And the, the electric brake setup is just horrible in this trailer. Anybody that has electric brakes, I feel for you right now. I he, I remember you talking about that all the time. Not, yeah. Even when they're not broke, you have to get in there all the time. I mean, all the yep. time. Yep. We lived in a real nice subdivision. I had my damn trailer out there pulling wheel bearings and everything out of that thing every weekend just to make sure it wasn't going to break. And you can't put enough wire to allow for it to, to bounce because if you do, then it's going to get caught on something, then it breaks, you know, and those things are pieces of shit. Yeah. But <laughs> one thing with those trailers that I did do is everywhere we went, I paid attention to where I could buy um, either an axle, which is better just go ahead and replace the axle. But I would always find where I could buy the, the, the two by 12 brake uh, drum at and anything else I needed, the wheel bearings and all that. And I and I actually would, you know, and I would pay attention to that. And believe it or not, that saved my ass at least four or five times. Even if I had unhooked from the trailer and go in the dually to go get it. Because, I mean, you know, kind of a roadside thing, you know. But, right. I, well, I, have, I, I have I fixed the brakes on my wedge. But one thing you're talking about, the wire that goes across the axle and in the – in the, the axle and all that other stuff goes across. The way you solve that is get a piece of plastic PVC and run the wire next to that axle and zip tie the snot out of it to the axle on the backside and run your That's wire to that, to that PVC. And that way it's still protected, but you can get to it a little better. Take that third axle out too. Those things don't run good with three I'm axles. <laughs> I jumping at the bit of it. <laughs> I, I took an well, I guess, out of an I guess my trailer. problem is is that I didn't know that if I got in the car hauling business, my equipment would break. So how much does this stuff cost? How often are you doing an oil change? How much do you pay? Whether you're in a one ton or a semi? Don? Um, oh, Don, go first. Daniel, Jason? Well, a, a semi truck is usually like PM generally is around 200 bucks. Um, and if you're doing it, you're dually, it's three gallons, three gallons of oil. So it's, and I usually use that synthetic. So it's 20, so about, about a hundred dollars maybe for the, yeah, I spend about a hundred dollars with AMS oil. I always rotate my truck every 10,000 miles and yep. brakes and all that good stuff. And I, I use all, when I'm on the duallys, I always use OEM brakes because man, I'll tell you what, once you find a good set of tires that will get close to 50, 60,000 miles out of them and a set of brakes that'll get close to, 67 with all that weight we were pulling i had oem brakes that were close to seventy thousand miles and we took them off i was just like they've got to be and they still were in good shape i mean you know so i always go back with oem on the dualies and then on so the let's let's break this down for everybody real quick so you're driving <clears throat> you're saying you're changing oil every ten thousand miles is that what i heard with synthetic yeah okay 
And <clears throat> how many miles do you drive a week? It's yeah, it's 2,500 a week. About, about we were doing well, it's what we were doing 20, 2,500 a week. About every month, I've changed the oil and rotate the tires. So every month, month. <laughs> every I mean, month. it's synthetic, so you can get away with going to, to 13, 15. I mean, it they, they actually tell you you can go 30,000 if you just switch the filter, but I'm not that guy. Well, I bought a new truck and it's under warranty. They should cover the oil change, Don. <laughs> I didn't know that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have yeah. mine set now. And so it's, I so, can get away with up to 15,000. Okay, but I so have the oil check. You change the oil in your one ton once a month, basically. Is that what I think I heard? Yeah. Yep, once a month. And that's about how much in your one ton? Uh, About 100 bucks every 10,000 miles. That's if you do it yourself. Yeah, I do it myself. Yeah, but you okay. can take it. You can take it somewhere. Like I, I had, I get guys. I get a mechanic. I get somebody that's good at what they do, and they, they kind of help me. And and I, I do it. I come when we come back. That's what we would always do. And I would take it to like, I actually believe it or not, the dually had a guy at Big O that always took care of me. Always discounted my tires. He checked everything for me all the time. Even though I'm still doing the same thing, it was nice <clears> to take it in and put it on a list. Cause there's things that I'm not going to see sitting on the side of the road or what, you know, or at my house, or whatever. So right. he, always, he would put the oil in, uh, they wouldn't do a fuel filter because they didn't want to, you know, worry, uh, worry about the injectors or anything like that. And the fuel filter went in about every two months. I could get about 20,000 miles out of a fuel filter, depending on where I run. If I was in like Louisiana and stuff, not so much. Some of that Southern fuel, especially down here in Florida is horrible. It's one of the, it <clears throat> bogs those things up so fast. Okay, well, I'm trying to get a gauge on how much extra money I got to spend a month if I want to get into car hauling. So I'm, I'm hearing $100 extra a month to change the oil. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Then I heard you say if you can find tires that you can get fifty to 60,000 miles out of them, right? Is that what I heard? Yeah. Okay, so how much are your tires for your dually, Dave? Um. Well, I have 19 and a half inch tires. I have the bigger one. And they're like 350. They're almost as much as semi tires. They're about 350 a piece. Donnie, how about you, Don? Bing? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Tires. <laughs> I, was, huh? I, was buying, I was buying those Nitto Cross Techs or whatever. They seem to hold up pretty good. We put nitrogen in them and everything. And as long as you rotate them every 10,000 mm -hmm. miles, They'll do what they're supposed to do. Every once in a while, we would get one that had like a manufacturer issue, and usually they would take care of you know something like that if it started. How wearing. much? How much are those tires again? Uh, it was probably close to that. It was probably about three hundred dollars by the time they were mounted and balanced. Three hundred a piece. Yeah, easily. You're getting fifty thousand miles out of them. About six months. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've gotten I've gotten a little longer than that before. You know, it, and it's another thing, the same thing. When you're out running and it's in the summertime and it's hot, it seems like it, the tires don't seem to want to hold up as much. Yeah. Pressure makes a big difference. So, right. Okay. And how many tires are on your dually? Six. Okay. Six so six times three. 1,800? 1, 1,800. Okay. And you're driving 2,500 miles a week. So 50,000 miles-ish divided by 2,500 equals – anybody got a calculator? That should be my job. What do we got? What's the number? I need to <laughs> He's not, Jay's not even paying attention anymore. I'm just I'm hey, running, Jay, I'm, I'm Jay, running the switcher. Jay, you're gonna you're gonna spend about a hundred dollars a week. Show, Jay. Uh, dispatcher's got a calculator. What's going on? Who but what? I'm wiping the well, I'm, 50, no, I'm 000, awake. I'm awake. What's fifty thousand divided by twenty five hundred? We got twenty. 20 so 20 weeks we got to spend 1800 yeah it's about a hundred dollars a hundred dollars a week for tires and I, I usually spend i used to spend probably with all the other stuff about 55 60 bucks just for like fuel filters air filters and that's just on the dual that's a cheap little truck you know and that's not including if you get to a point where you need tie rods brakes <clears throat> yeah let's talk about brakes how often are you placing the brakes front back both Hold on, Chuck, real quick. I don't know if you can see this. No, I don't think you can see it. So, pull the spreadsheet. You got a spreadsheet? Yeah. I got a spreadsheet. It breaks everything down. 
for like the tires, the oil. Um, <laughs> oh my! All that stuff is twenty six cents a month. Hey guys, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna draw your attention to something. This is important because this gets into this gets into one of the issues of 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 why I believe. We have fragmentation even within the show right now, and um, and Ziggy, uh, Ziggy, thank you for helping you know bridge the gap because we have a gap, and here it is. We now have on Facebook. We're getting comments about how we're not talking about we're not talking enough about semis and and full load trailers, right? Stingers, high mounts. We've spent too much time talking about dualies and wedges the comments already been made this should be called the high cost of wedge trailers so i want to i want to posit this are we able to also go into what's required because here's the thing then the comment just got made i see it snowballing you guys and listen i appreciate you guys tuning in on facebook and youtube but the youtube audience is used to the way this show operates but the facebook audience is not and we are now, we're starting to deviate into, I'm not sure if it's helpful, but I just got the comment, this is not car hauling. As a matter of fact, it is car hauling. It oh, may I not be, it may not be the flavor of Popsicle <laughs> you're used to, but it does count in the car hauling ecosystem. So, to satisfy, and then we got a comment, take your shoes off and count with your toes. That's wonderful. That's great. You know what? That's exactly the way the executives think you guys talk did you know that do you know why oems don't want to meet with all the carriers because of comments like that guys as a matter of fact this is part of car hauling okay please continue let's go back to well, i'm not i'm not sure how you haul i'm not sure how you haul cars without trucks that's <laughs> help me out there i gotta draw that well, for me how are I you can supposed to move them if you don't have trucks and costs so I pick up at Mannheim and PA, and they actually do them with horses. Uh, you're in Lancaster, oh. so they do them by <laughs> I horse. Can, I, can see. I can't believe I saw that. Yeah. I mean, that's okay, all. Well, let's talk about semis. Yeah, right, let's do it. Let's do it. Cause let's see if we can if we can appease. You guys want to talk about stingers, yeah. or do you want to talk about this is high mountains? We're gonna, we're what gonna, do you want to talk about? We're gonna, let's do the super trucker show. Let's do this. Because that's real car haul. That's baby. right. Only if you're a super trucker are you a real car real hauler. Car haul, but it's real freaking expensive is what it is. Let's see what happens, guys. <laughs> All right, so what do you want to know? Yeah, let's talk. I can't help I don't drive one. Let's talk <laughs> semis. Oh, you can't hear me. I, I deal with people that want their cars now, not next month. So I don't know. I have a smaller car and a smaller truck, and I expedite it. But, well, and here's the problem. Uh, so I don't, and thing is, well, everything we're talking about here, I think, is secondary market. Whereas you're going to find the super trucker and the new car hauling, because only new car hauling is real car hauling. Is that correct? Is that what we're talking well, about? I guess that's what they think. That's what they think. Mm, okay. Well, no, you know what? Uh, Take that opinion and sit down with an OEM and let him know that they only... Real car hauling is new car hauling, nine at a time, one pick, one drop. And you know, he's probably right. going to go ahead and agree <laughs> with you, and then he's going to get whatever he had, and he's going to get up and leave. Because you know what? Ty and I have actually witnessed this. Ty and I have sat at a table with an OEM and a super trucker. And you know what the OEM? Yeah, this is a true story. True story. This super trucker blew it with the OEM. And you know who stuck around and hung out with us for a half hour? The OEM. So, I don't know, man. I don't know if we just need to talk super trucker all day. But I tell you, that is a frustrating thing. And it really sucks for this industry that we've got to be so fragmented about depends on what kind of power you, you drive and how many cars you deliver at one location or pick up at one location. No wonder a lady gets hit with holding her sign thinking she can stop a truck. She's buying into all this nonsense. <laughs> Stupid, well, no, you guys. I can't see the I can't see the comments oh, on there. So what's the You're what, lucky the, you can't. That's right. That's right. I'm written. Yeah. Well, and then, hey, here's another comment. He says he's on the other side. He says new car hauling is easy. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know if any of it's easy, right? And in fact, when you get and that was the whole point of this show. 
I thank you, Don. Maintenance, cost, repair, breakdown. I don't care if you're hauling plants and wood and bathroom supplies. You're probably going to experience maintenance, repairs, and breakdowns. It's trucking, folks. And I'm just sitting at a desk and I'm talking about it. I didn't have to crawl around under the under the cab for 24 hours getting lucky with a wire, right? I mean, it's crazy. It really is crazy. All right, I'm sorry. I just hijacked. <clears throat> oh, M Eminem says, you tell him, Jay. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what's so frustrating? And this <clears throat> is why we get blamed. We're either telling everybody to get in the business or we're telling everybody to get out of the business. We're just trying to share real information. That's all we're trying to do. I'm not trying to tell anybody to take your job or beef up the robots or bring in the CO2 emissions laws or crank up the ELD. None of that stuff. I'm just sharing information. Can well, I here's, here's the deal, man. Can here's, here's what it comes down to. Yes. People on the outside looking at what the drivers make per car, dropping stuff off, and then it, all they're doing is counting your money. But what they're not doing is they're not counting your expenses to do or perform the thing that you're doing. It's the same in the entertainment business. They all want to count my money, but they don't want to understand and know what I got to do to even be there to do what I do. And so we've seen on the entertainment side, people jump into things because the money was great. But what they didn't understand was all the junk that came with it. It's <laughs> the nuts totally. and bolts. You totally. lift the hood up and you go, oh, my gosh. It's the same with the trucking. I mean, how hard could it be? You put some cars on a trailer, you drive around, and you drop them off. How hard could it be? Okay, explain that to somebody when they're sitting on the side of the road and the tow truck comes and you're a million miles away at a hundred and some dollars an hour to get towed a mile. They're not an hour, but by the mile. I mean, I had an eight-mile uh, tow one time. It cost me $875, and I was in a tour bus. I mean, that is painful, and people don't understand those costs. And they don't understand. And, and, you know, here's what I don't care for is that I'm in an industry where I own the gear and I'm paying the insurances. And I have a broker telling me what they're going to pay me to move their crap. Oh, let me tell you. Exactly. This is where hey, it get in the office. This is my truck. That phone, that phone has made me so angry about a thousand times. I mean, yeah. I can't believe yeah, it's so I, I got to be up. Oh. I got to beat up a broker and I got to pay $115 to have a subscription to an account so I can find the broker who's got the piece of junk that I think that I can get from point A to point B and make a little money. And then I get somebody saying, oh, look at all the money you make. This is great. You know what I tell my friends when they say, how much do you make a week? And I tell them, I go, just whack a zero off the end because this number won't make sense to you. And neither will the cost of the fuel when I go in and fill up. And neither will the cost of the tires. Take a zero off of any number I give you, and you'll be able to comprehend the ratio because it's all about the same. Somebody posted in here that their operating expense was half of the gross revenue, and then the other half went to business expense. So do you, I shared that. I loved that uh, that 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 lease on. <clears throat> do you see that lease on breakdown that guy had in? I shared it in the industry news. His gross revenue was twenty four hundred. His his net pay was one twenty five. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. And, and you know, Jay, I, I hate to go another way, but I would like a show for them guys to explain why it's okay. Just because you all nine cars, why is it okay to run them at thirty five or forty cents a month? I don't a know. Spot is a spot is a spot. I still don't know. You can go find it on my truck, but yet yeah, I'm the non-car hauler cutting the rates. I mean, I'm just trying to figure it out. I That's know. all. And, and, and you won't see me I, at a manhunt. I, I, That's so because they they have created that market. And they say, oh, I had a oh, couple we're lazy. Brothers. If you give us nine, we'll take less money. And no, wait, wait, wait. No, this is the yeah, best. Yeah, go ahead. I'm at a Mannheim. I'm at a Mannheim. I got these two brothers. They're having this argument. The guy comes up to me. He's got, I don't know how many cars in a car hauler. And he and his brother stand standing there and he goes, how do you make money with three cars? I said, I'm making the same as you are for that entire load because I'm going to places where you can't or don't want to go. And they're all specialty loads because they need to get it from point A to point B. I said, you, on the other hand, are going to go to a city and you're going to spend all day 
you know, strapping these cars, getting them on and off, playing with the little hydraulics and all this other stuff. And I'm going to be in and out like a matter of a half hour. And he took his hat off and he hit his brother over the head and said, I told you! It was great. I mean, and that's you know, that's really what it comes down to is because they're under the impression that we're out there with three car wedges making 35 cents a mile. It's like, no, I'm not <laughs> that's testing what they that. Run for that. They think yes, that's all yeah. they can get and that's all we can get. I ain't never well, had Well, that's no because they got, a, they got a park. Yeah, they got a parking spot open and it's killing them. And they know it, you know. And I'll, and he yeah. looked at his brother. I told you. I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm not. I'm not a load you, know, you figure you had seven cars on there, man. You are strapping and unstrapping 28 sets of tires in the air. I'm not doing it. That's not my gig. I'm not signing up that's for why, that. That's why you're not a car hauler. You're not strapping down 28 tires in there. Jeez. No. And I, you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm they okay. I'll go back to down you. I'm good with that. They don't strap 28 They like, put two I'm out of town. Car. They don't do 28. And by for the record, I don't think that's easy either. You know, I'll tell you what. I, uh, like, uh, I think it's John Wilhelm, Car Carrier TV. If I had more room on the screen, he'd be here with us. And he does he does full loads. All right. He drives a stinger. And he uh man, I'll tell you what, racing doing nine enterprise cars like bada bing, bada boom. I mean that's that's a special skill. That really is. It's impressive. Somebody has to do that work. And I'm, thank goodness somebody does do that work. Because like you were just talking about, that's not the kind of work that you want to do. But I don't think well, you know, I don't and, think there's and, any numbers and, that divide by nine perfectly. You're going to have some leftovers. You know, in in the realm of things, it doesn't matter what you do, or you know, if, if you're pulling them with with a dually or you're pulling them with a semi or whatever, you know, someone's always got to have something to say. We're all out here doing the same thing. We're riding a concrete ribbon. We're trying to feed our families. You know, I had a DOT agent one time pull me over and go, "Who are you working for?" And I looked at him and I go my wife and kids who do you work for and he looked at me i go okay now you have another question it did honest to god and the drivers like looked at me i'm like you drill me like that who do you think i'm working for my wife and kids now what do you want to know he says what company i said it's my own and i tell him you know but you've got to humanize it and got to realize we're all out there doing it i mean life's like this highway people getting on and off different exits going different places we're all sharing the road and we're all trying to make it and we're trying to do it safely that period yeah, it doesn't matter if you pull up two cars, guys, one, nine cars most of them guys that are talking all this on facebook aren't even truck drivers you know they own a business right. they're not a truck driver you know and that's right. what it comes down to like they, they just can't and, do it mm. and realistically if you is. get a pen and paper out and you figure out your profit and loss margin and what <laughs> you're going to have i don't care what business it is by the time you get done with your pen and paper you're going to look at that and go, well, it's not worth doing this either. You know, I mean, I, I think I think it's good to know the costs and that, but everybody's costs are going to be different. I mean, some guy buys a new truck, great. He's got payments. I don't have payments. I bought my truck, but I'm paying for maintenance as we go. Some people got a pickup truck. So if you, you know, you got to just get into it. But I think it's good to know what to expect but if you sit there and, and hammer it out, I mean, you'll talk yourself out of just about anything that you want to do doing it this way. You got to know the, what's, what's out there risk-wise, what you're going to cost. But, you know, if you're going to get in a business and it's in your heart and you want to do it, just do it. This, and if it sucks, get out. This is the you know. fine line. This is it right here. Like, this is where you're, you're, you're literally walking on the third rail right now. It, you can you can research it to death and never do it, or you can dive in and maybe not work. But it's it's right here. You can always this watch is, it on Facebook. This is decision time. That's right. Or you can just watch Auto Transport Intel and every Tuesday. There you go. Every Tuesday, and just keep researching forever. And we listen. Ty and I talk about this all. The, we talk about it almost every day. What are we gonna do? Are we are we telling people? Are we trying to help? Whoa, people? whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, Jay. Yeah. Just so the the guys out there that are in the big rigs need to understand something. I used to own twenty of them, stingers. Jay and I spend a lot of time talking about you guys and how to incorporate you into this audience. So we'll get to you. Just relax. <laughs> it's kind of what well, I most of them don't want to do. They're too good for it. And and, and I and, and I'm saying this. 
is that that's the thing is I'm tired of the fragmentation and I I'll tell you what I, I got a bet I'll make you guys a bet because I've already made it with you guys individually some of you guys right already know this about me is that I made a bet two years ago <clears throat> that this wouldn't be just a dispatching channel and it's not I, we haven't even pulled up Central Dispatch, and I hardly even do that anymore. Only when only when prodded, when people irritate me, then I'll pull up the load board. But my next bet is this, is that what we're, what's going to happen, and it's already started to happen, you guys just don't all know, is that we're talking to OEMs, we're talking to dealers, we're talking to mega carriers, and there's going to come a time, not too far from, be, be about one year. In one year, if you run a stinger, you definitely want to be watching this show. Because we are going to have OEMs, mega carriers on this show, talking on the show, maybe advertising on the show. I'm not exactly what's going to sure what's going to happen next, but this is the business channel. It is. Boom. There we go. Now listen, and here's the thing: is here's I want I want to say this. This is did an you important. You just dropped the mic, I Jay. did. I just dropped. I got to find it. Listen, here's the important <laughs> part: is that. I need the I need you guys to help me put this architecture in place. I'm sitting at a desk. I'm the guy on the phone. I'm not out on the road. That's pretty obvious. It's obvious to the super truckers. <clears throat> well, it don't matter if you're a super trucker or a dually driver. It, it, the whole point of the show is is that you can always take and put down all your maintenance and cost on paper and you can put down how much you think you're going to make on paper. That's that. Those are the easy, tangible numbers. It's the unexpected expenses that unforeseen items. It doesn't matter if it's a small truck or a big truck. It applies to all of us. It's the same thing. I've blown motors and just about everything. I've lost transmissions at about everything. I mean, it happens. And that's the stuff that I think, I think probably we're trying to get across is that, you've got to have some sort of security. You have to have a backup plan for when that happens. And it, who knows? God, I wish I knew when it was going to happen. You can't, you can go and change the oil every day. And all of a sudden if the turbo goes down and the bearing goes through the motor, it's the same thing as a blown. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's impossible to know. It's, it, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I mean, it, it doesn't matter what kind of vehicle it's, it's an expensive business. You have hydraulics on some vehicles. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have air brakes. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have lead. It all translates. You know, you have basic expenses. You all know we got to replace the tires, the brakes, the, the fuel. Every, every, all this stuff is we have to do. It's it's the crazy stuff that you can't. And then, like, or getting T-bone when you're sitting on the side of the road. Somebody runs into the side of your trailer. Oh, my gosh. Like, That's that? crazy. You know? It, it's the stupid shit. You know. Hey, one more thing I just thought of. By the way, sorry to interrupt you, Donnie, but back I can't get past these guys cracking at us. Um, no. <laughs> we're, we're talking to some fleet guys that are looking for drivers, by the way. And they're, we're getting ready to make some deals with some big fleet guys that would like to have drivers come work for them. So if you're not happy wherever you're at and you think three-car guys suck, Give us a call. Maybe we can put you in a three car with a big fleet company or something. It is about to get interesting. And you know what I want to say? Here's a, here's my since I mean I pre, like I appreciate all you guys being on the show tonight. Is that find a way? Um, maybe there's a way that we can. If there's something I can do, like on one of the on one of the videos you've got going on. If you're listen, if any of you guys are in Kansas City, let's make a need, video. John Griffo. Bring John I'll see you in a few here. days, Jay. You're, you're going to be here? Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll talk to Sue. Yeah, I'll talk to Sue. Jay, I'll be there tomorrow. Are you serious? Jay, I'll be in KC tomorrow. I'm dead serious. I'm dropping in Iowa City, picking, picking up a load, and then I'm going down to Kansas City, Missouri tomorrow. Come on, I'll Buck. get a hold of you. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, uh, when uh, hey, are you we're, talking? We're going to have to do the panel panel live at a barbecue Dude, joint. Dude, I'm serious. Live panel, live barbecue. Dude, that's insane. I, I got to work. I can't really barbecue, I know. but we can do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, are, now where? Yes, where, I will be. Where in Kansas City? Um, and are you talking well, evening or what? Oh, uh, I don't know. I didn't even find a load out of there yet. I know. So I know. I'll be there tomorrow. Okay, keep me posted. Keep. That's great, man. Send me when you know of so a load. Can, when you know of a. Do me a favor. Give me a, like, if you know of, like, a four-hour window 
and an area, whether north side, which is Mannheim or Odessa on the south side, right? Something like that. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Okay, awesome. Hold on. Awesome, man. It looks like the the west side. The west side? Oh, um, you're, you're on the Kansas side. Uh, Mark says he's in KC yeah, tomorrow. Going, wow, cool, Mark. Keep me posted. Wait. Wyandotte County Lake Park. You know where that's at? Wyandotte County. That's on the Kansas side. Um, that's like, uh, yeah. What, what, now, what are you doing? Is What is it, POV? What are you, dealer? What do you got? No. No, this one is, um, uh, it's going to a dealer. It's going to, okay, so you're dropping to the dealer in Wyandotte County. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Keep me posted. We can do that. That's pretty cool. Right. That is pretty cool. Last time I was in Kansas City with you, I had to scale that uh, that plate of onion rings to look at you. It was so damn high. Oh man, we 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 <laughs> ate at Oklahoma Joe's. It is oh, Kansas City my, does yeah. have great barbecue. It, it really does. Oh yeah. Well, and there's oh well now yeah. wait we oh no the last time you were here we ate at um, Jack Stack. There's a Jack Stack in Martin uh, City near Odessa. Uh, that place is obnoxious. Yeah. Holy mackerel. That's good. That's good. That stuff. was like six six feet of onion rings. They, they do. They have like an onion ring tower. Yeah. Yeah. So. For car haulers. And and even if, even if like, even if we miss, like, you're going to be here tomorrow, but even if we miss each other tomorrow, luckily Kansas City's in the middle, you know, it's, you know, it's that center. I don't have to tell you where it is. That's ridiculous, Jay. <laughs> And by the way, Jason, I think your I think your video your video window on my screen froze. Yeah, it's out on mine too. Okay, all right, cool. All right, that's... I thought like we just death there and said, like, oh, "What's going on?" Right, he's like, he's like a mannequin, <laughs> a magic trick or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my magic. Yeah, hey, just real quick, I was gonna say something. I know it goes a little off subject, but y'all earlier y'all were talking about people talking about a slow season and a on season and stuff. Um, you know, one thing about that is, is that it, it fluctuates, it does fluctuate, you know, um, throughout the year on how many cars are getting moved and, you know, getting close to tax time and things like that. But one of the things I noticed a lot of is that if you're an up north company, um, a lot of those companies start running the southern routes and they start flooding the market. So Florida, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, because they're trying to get away from the weather. It's real hard to load oh, oh. cars when you're in the snow and ice. Those people are, you know, their business gets slower because people aren't coming in to buy cars that much. And, you know, so everybody starts flooding south. And no, I stay up north all the winter. Good for all you. Winter. I love it. Good for you, yeah, Dave. You kind of have smart. to because oh. you're just battling. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's brutal. But so weather definitely affects it. And I wouldn't just so much look at the month. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a time for the market. It's more for... What, what you know where everybody's at i mean if you have ten thousand car haulers and they're all headed down to get out of the weather and that's and i'll be honest with you a lot of times we would take trucks that way just to let the hydraulics and stuff freeze unfreeze so we could get leaks fixed and you know i mean but the trailers need painted every year after that that's for sure all that salt everything eating it oh, up yeah. So. That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> right. you know i really haven't ever felt the love with any of my dispatchers it always seemed wherever the crap was at, that's where I was sent. It's funny. Okay. It's, and that's what, hey, and I was, okay, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to roll on my sleeves. Okay. Right. Listen, here's the deal, buddy, <laughs> is that when, when you're talking to a dispatcher staring at a load board and you're just, you know, you're just begging for anything good, if you tell me something like, hey, I want to go to Florida, I'm like, dude, you can't pick where you want to go. Either you pick where you want to go, and, and, and do something fun that you want to do, or we're going to go make money. And, you know, I was going to say, this is really interesting. And I, I hate I hate that I'm saying this, but, you know, we like to share secrets. The secret is, John, we did pretty good. We did. But I always thought it was funny. It was like, dude, where are you? And I'd say, I'm here. No. Do you know you're two miles away from the riot and the city's burning? Oh, my God. Oh, great. Oh, man. Yeah, as soon as you get those two cars out of there, dude, yeah, then I need you to go somewhere else. Okay. Just, just and then I go, I, you know what? I, dude, I felt, like, I felt like Jim at Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom, and you were Marlon Perkins. <laughs> you know, Jim will now jump in with the alligator and wrestle, you know, because if he doesn't, he's going to take the show over, you know. So I was like. We did. And- I'm like. 
Where are we going now? We did, where's, the, where's the news happening? I'll be there. We did do we did some crazy stuff. And what's really funny, Don, is I was booking John at the same time I was booking you. And uh, but luckily you guys were in different areas. But I mean that was the thing. The thing is, Don, you said you had customers. And that's where that's where I got my first taste of, oh, this is kind of good if you have a customer, because then I'm just filling spots around it. Whereas with John, it was make me money. And so I would, I would I'd look at the load board a couple days in advance, and I'm sitting there sweating it out, and I'm like, man, I got to, you know, come on, lucky sevens. And I would see that car, and I knew I had to have it. And I'd, I'd, be, I'd be so tense. I would stand up, and I'd be standing, and I'm pacing, and I'm making the phone call, and I'm like, listen, here we, and I'm, just, I'm saying anything I can just to get this car. Yeah, we'll pick it up. But we need an extra two hundred, and we have to do this. And we, I'm I'm making demands. I'm trying to bully the dealer into giving me like giving me this Fiesta for fourteen hundred bucks, you know. But that that was that was the way I started getting an anchor load. And when I could get that and, anchor and then, load, and then, and then a bit, and I just, I get what? into those cities where he would book me, right? And as I'm passing the news trucks and the city's on fire and people are throwing things, like, how's it going, buddy? Now we know. Oh, what, this is. Great. Now we know why I was paying fourteen hundred. We're going to Florissant, oh, like, and this is right oh, after <laughs> the beef in. Uh, what happened in St. Louis? Oh, I don't even remember what happened. Oh, dude. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was bad. It was, it was bad. just bad. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. And then you sent me into into Baltimore when they blew up. And then I was oh, going. Yeah. Through, I don't know. Yeah. I was going through Flagstaff or whatever. Well, how about what, Detroit? Bus, You've had some fun in Detroit, Detroit. haven't you? Oh my dude. I, yeah, it was New Year's Eve. Sure, I'll wait for you. And I get there a half hour after I talk to the guy and he's gone and everybody's got bars in their windows except my truck. Hey Jay, we got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, that's we'll it, fix man. it. Oh yeah, that so, was so uh, I won't even tell you what I did that night. But I'm glad We're you said so that's there. that's the thing is this is still car hauling, right? And whether Absolutely. you, whether, and I know, listen, I even saw somebody was talking about brokers are in the house. Whether you're in the dispatch or the brokering or you're in the truck or you're an owner, owners still work in car hauling and they're not behind the wheel, right? I'm pretty sure. Okay. And the OEMs, man, those guys, they do work in car hauling. If you're moving a thousand VWs and you're trying to figure out if you're going to put it on the train or the ship, I'm pretty sure that's car hauling. Just because you're not behind the wheel of a nine-car stinger doesn't mean you're the only one in car hauling. This is important. But, yeah, but those same guys that are down in us car haulers, they're the, first to, they're the first to use us, or they're the first to ask us to join their, their things or whatever. They're the first one to put a car on our trailer and try to do it deeper. Well, the, I, don't know. I mean, the, I think the whole point is we all need each other on that. I mean, uh, this is right. that's, that's a real thing. It, 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 like just like you said, you're not going to take a ten car stinger in and deliver people's cars to their house. No. So you got to have a smaller truck for that. I mean, yeah, so, United Road, what, United Road. That's right. This, that's cars, United Road the ones I pull out in the field. This is why I say Carvana. Ninety percent of my cars are the ones. Carvana is a car. You can't hauler. get them. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. And we, so we, when we started bringing the seven cars in, we were doing that with smaller trucks. We had a, a little dually and the two car trailer to get the deliver, which was a little confusing for everybody. Cause they're like, how are you going to put that on? You know? And they thought that's what we were driving across the United States, you know, but, uh, we did a lot of that. I mean, who the hell wants to drive a seven car, you know, almost 14 foot back there underneath trees where they tell me I can get into it. And, and they don't <laughs> totally. there, you know? I mean, there's yeah. a, there's a, a time and a place. Yeah. yeah. Hey man, you know what? That screwdriver, that's not a tool. Only hammers are tools, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every, we all, everybody needs right, everybody in this business. Hey Jay, I got a piece out, man. Yeah. You know what? And yeah, listen, I got yeah. I got some dog. Guys, thank you so much. This is a great ending point. Thank you guys so much right. for joining the show tonight. Thanks, Thanks for having us on, Jay. All right, bye. See you later. Peace right, out, thank you later, guys. Peace. Hey. Thank you. And cut. All right, man. Was, you know, it's interesting here. Let's switch this up. Is that I? I know that. Um, I I knew I knew that eventually uh, that that issue would come up, 
and I had a feeling it would probably come up live. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. And I don't have a speech prepared. I just know that, um, I do know that, even though I sit at a desk all day, um, I, I know that the phone conversations I'm having with the different parts of the ecosystem, this is still car hauling. You know, don't let anybody tell you that you got to do a certain thing to be a certain somebody. I, I think that's just silly. You know, that's just a waste of time. But listen, I do want, this is not a waste of time. I do want to thank, I want to thank the folks that help support this channel. It really means a lot. Listen, if you're looking for a good trailer, Sun Country Trailers, check it out. Go to suncountrytrailers.com. And if they don't have the trailer you're looking for, tell them what you're looking for to do with your business. You can talk to them. They want to hear from you. Talk to Sun Country Trailers. Listen, I mean this too. If you are looking for car hauling software, somebody that you can talk to, again, that's a big part. Everybody knows you can, you know, you, you can live chat and you want to talk to somebody. Representative, representative. Go for auto carrier software. You can contact them. You can call them. You can get Niles on the phone ask questions and find out is this the car hauling software that can help you grow your business because you got repeat business man you got customers now you got orders coming in this is contract business you need to automate it and move on and listen the customers the shippers the dealers the oems especially in the new car hauling space they're not going to mess around with the way you want to do it they've got edi that they expect you to, to plug into and be capable of taking their information and using it during the pickup all the way to delivery. That's what happens with Gopher Auto Carrier Software. Listen, if you are looking for a better load board, we talked about load boards, you need something good, better rates, more reliable, somebody you can talk to. I shared a video recently, man, that guy was not happy. Did you see that recent Facebook share? That's not the way to go. Go to ACV Auctions, acvauctions.com forward slash ATI. That is a load board where they will talk to you. They want you to do well. Listen, they don't want, if they lowball you, you'll go out of business. What good is that? They're, they want to keep their carriers happy. ACV Auctions is a place where carriers are happier. So go there. And also, listen, if you are like John, you're driving, you're busy, you've got other things going on, you really do need a dispatcher, Murphy Auto Dispatch Services. She, man, Sue is on the ball. She tunes into this show. She's been on the show. She's a friend of the show. She knows a lot. You can ask her questions, and she talks dispatch day and night, more than I do now. I've now, I've moved on into other parts of the ecosystem. But you want to talk dispatching? Murphy Auto Dispatch Services. And listen, you guys, it means a lot that you tune in every Tuesday night and you listen to me go on and on. And, you know, <laughs> you pick, I got, I got people coming in Facebook now, man. You guys, thank you guys so much for saying hello. You know, it's pretty neat. I've only been live on Facebook while being live on YouTube. It's only been a few weeks now. But I'm going to keep that going. Um, so listen, it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. It's not going away. It's here to stay. It's only growing. And for you guys out there that are checking out the show, and you know, it's kind of a wait and see, thank you for taking the time to do that. It means a lot. Listen, if you haven't hit the like button yet, you haven't shared, subscribed, whatever it is, Please do take the time to do that. You could send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. Go to the YouTube comments. Go to Facebook. Go to autotransportintel.com. That's the blog domain. Or send me an email if you just want to keep it off the record between us. Let me know how I can help you. We really are trying to help. This is the Car Hauling Business Channel. Tuesday Night's Live, Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay. Here comes the car hauler. You guys, peace out. I hope that your maintenance, repairs, and costs don't take you out of business. We want you to be prepared. We want you to make it home safe so you can spend time with your family because that's what it's all about. This is a family business. Trucking is a family business. Be safe out there, y'all. Take care of your families. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next Tuesday night. <music>